Hi guys, Paul Jurassic Rambler here. Um, anything backpack and camping, walks, etc. Please um, hit like and subscribe. And new channel, we're trying to provide um, sort of relevant content that I'd find useful. Lots of stuff out there, I know. Um, but someone who's just got back into his into his outdoor existence after many years of. Uh, Found some of the, the stuff that I've been looking at um, really useful, and thought I could I could add to that as well for other people out there. So, what I want to talk to you today is about what type of kit I would take uh, going on a trip. So, I've got a upcoming trip I'm going to do around the Isle of Wight coastal path. So, hopefully, I'll get a couple of videos on uh, on that journey uh, in the next week or so. Um, but it's just again going through some of my thought process and, and decisions that I make around the, the kit that I've I've got and what sort of criteria and risk based assessments I would do in terms of kit that I may take or may not take. Okay, I've obviously looked at the um, the forecast as well, so I can see the forecast for the next few few days um, and what it looks like. So again, all that type of information should come into your um your thought process and, and again your your sort of selection of kit um that you you're going to take um i got obviously number of tents number of um backpacks etc so again some of those things will, will help make uh, the, the right decision for me for this trip so first thing i'm going to talk about is actually the backpacks <laughs> um obviously i've day sack that I use for a lot of my, my day hiking and stuff which is a normal 40 litre that hits um, all the spots for me serves all the purposes I can get all my gear in it that I need for a day walk obviously going through a um, going through a through hike um, obviously I need some more kit I have two I guess what I would call my my wild camping bits of kit uh, I've got two rucksacks and they're both very very different the first one is is this one so this is a um it's a millet ubic it's a 60 plus 10 so that means it's obviously has 60 liters plus an additional 10 i guess through the out um the external pockets that come with it this is a a real heavy duty rucksack in fact it, this is actually more made for um alpine um trekking um it's has so many attachments on it i'd probably spend a video just filming <laughs> what they all do but this is, is is geared for a lot of mountaineering stuff it also has attachments to carry uh touring skis normal skis snowboards you name it this has got it um, so it's a real sort of alpine adventure one it's big because of all those those features as well because of the i guess the um of what it's made for it's obviously very sturdy and with sturdiness come weight okay i think this weighs in around maybe up to maybe two and a half key okay kilograms it does have a you know adjustable back it's it's a it's a framed backpack so it has an aluminium frame in there this is adjustable has really really strong um uh, hip belt which is wide as well so it's, it's quite good supporting um challenge i have with this sometimes when i do take it is I'm guilty, as most people are sometimes, of the bigger backpack, the more stuff you tend to put in it. And really, do you need all the additional stuff? Because it's obviously just additional weight. So that's one that I'm looking at that I might take. The other option I have is this one. Now, this is the other end of the spectrum. And this is, there's plenty of videos out there on YouTube around this. This is the Lanshan, um not the Lanshan, sorry, they're the company who make the tents. This is 3FUL. So this is the Kid Kidian Pro. And this is the frameless backpack. Okay, and I'll come on to that in a minute. This is literally light as a feather. Uh, it weighs in about 880 grams. Uh, to be precise, it's literally just a sack. And I'll, I'll might do a, a separate review video of this, but it is a very, very functional backpack um it's one that i've used recently on the jurassic coast uh where i did about 180 kilometers with it and it stood up really really well um obviously it is frameless so it's obviously a lot lighter the only consideration i have with this one is that sometimes i can't take as heavy a weight as perhaps in the other bag that i've showed you so again these are things that you have to think about in terms of how much weight and how much um, kit you're going to take with you 
this I think will be looking at the weather. This is going to be my bag of choice for this for this upcoming trip that I'm doing. Um, as I say, it, if it ticks all the boxes and it stood up really well to a, an eight day hike that I did recently, it is frameless. And the way this works with the frameless, there's you you are supposed to put in a some sort of pattern. So I've just used this. Uh, just show you here now. Has some straps there that you put. I use a, a seat map, and basically the whole idea is that by putting your back obviously goes against that, and it does provide some support. Um, and it, it tends to try and uh, not be as sweaty. I, I mean, I suffer. <laughs> regardless of what pack I've used, I tend to get, you know, sort of sweaty back sometimes and that. So um, the other one may have a, a better airflow. This doesn't, but it doesn't really make much difference to me. And I, I found this really comfortable. Um, as I say, I sometimes use that. Sometimes I double it up with a um, an insulated sort of roll mat as well. I used to do closed cell foam as well, just to provide the, the additional support. But this is super lightweight. Um, it's got massive massive um uh hip support around the uh on the hip belt um it's big solid and they really are when you feel them they're, they're pretty well um they're pretty well made to be honest i'm quite impressed with this as i say it stood up really well for me as massive two big pockets there and obviously you've got a massive um pocket at the front it's not a stretchy one we all like stretchy pockets but this one isn't but you can get an awful lot of stuff in there in fact i put my tents in there um on, on my last trip as well just to give you some more space as a roll, roll top feature as well so you can stuff your back up and then obviously just roll it roll it down i mean when it's unrolled it's it's pretty big and it feels a lot bigger than um, 46 liters to be honest and that's one of the, the beauties of this bag so this is the one I'm going to take um, what I'll now do is probably show you some of the kits I'm going to take and put in there and then we'll see uh, how we um, how I pack it and how I would then sort of carry it up uh, for, for my upcoming trip okay so backpack chosen let's get into the sleep stuff okay first of all I would put a pack liner in this is the Milo fume, I think they're called, and um, provides obviously waterproof. I, I think the, the rucksack says water resistant, but I don't think it's a hundred percent waterproof. I think um, I might need to take all the seams to make that um, be more confident in that. So I use a quilt. Okay, this is the Flame Creed quilt. Um, it, I don't know whether quilts are a bit like marmite. You either love them or. or People hate them. I love them. I, I like the fact that I can, I'm a bit of a, someone who always wakes up at night and tosses and turns. I like to kick my feet out as well. Um, so what I always do, I tend to just stuff this right into the pack, right down to the bottom. Um, obviously with it being down, it can quite pack quite small. And to fill in all those little pockets uh, and provides really really good base at the bottom of the rucksack next choice is tents so i have a couple of tents this one is the nature hike cloud peak 2 with poles so this is a freestanding tent um really good actually i do like this tent an awful lot however it is slightly again on the heavy side i think it's about two and a half kilogram so it's, it's for me that's top end really i think of um wait for a tent to go um on a you know a three or four day hike um it is a great tent though i have to admit i do like this tent an awful lot however because i know it's um the weather's not going to be too bad uh not going to be too windy and um, where i think this one comes into its own I'm, I'm really impressed with it so instead of that one i'm going to take this one which is the well-renowned lunch on two with this trekking pole tent, you can show how small it packs down to. For my rucksack, I can actually lay this in. I don't even have to stand it up horizontally. 
as I said, I think on the review of the pack, I can actually put it in the front of the pack if I want to as well. So really lightweight, weighs I think just over a kilogram. Um, I've done some modifications on this um, with the guy lines and stuff, but this is the one that I'm gonna take. So this goes in next. Let's just stick that down. Okay, the pegs tend to put them on my um, on the outside here, so I just tend to put that in the uh, the pack here, uh, this pocket. Okay, and then next thing we look at is sleeping pads. So I've done a separate video on this, which is the Big Agnes uh, Repeat SL. This is the regular wide. Um, this is fantastic. This is again. Given the time of year, we're coming up to early autumn in the UK. This has got an R rating of about 4.2, which is for the installation. So I have another pad, which I tend to use more in the summer, which is the Trekology, which again is equally as comfortable, but just doesn't have the insulation um, properties that this one has. So again, I don't know, it's about 750, 800 grams, I think, can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but it's super, super comfy, pretty compact as well. Um, and for me, sleep is a key thing um so this is my pad of choice if you want to see it in a bit more please check out my other video on it um, and comment uh, what you think of it It'd be appreciated so that goes in next push that in Okay, so tent, quilt, sleeping pad. Last but not least, pillow. So this is the um, Trekology pillow. Um, again, I've used this pretty much all year. Um, this has done me fantastic. Some, sometimes I, I might use a um, maybe a, 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 a jacket or a, a fleece under the pillow if I need a little bit more comfort, but this does me fine. I know there's other... Um, pillows out there which perhaps may be um, more comfy uh, but I think the, the Catalan one gets great reviews but I think it's considerably heavier and um, this is obviously just a, a blow up one goes around the sleep pad and does me so this goes in next and again because of the way we can pack you can just stuff it right down and fill in any of those any of those holes or spaces within the within the pack so that's the um, my sleep system and my, my shelter done. Let's next look at perhaps type of um, additional kit that I may take in terms of clothes and, and what my cooking setup might be for, for this coming up trip. Okay, so we've got pretty much all our sleeping stuff in there now. So what I can do is, is obviously cinch that bag down and then everything that I need to, to keep dry um, is dry now within would would stay dry within that that sack so clothes wise again i always take a a downstroke synthetic coat again because this obviously packs down really small I, I again just stuff this in and again it will find it's it will fill up all the the, cr the nooks and the crannies within within the sack so again saves an awful lot of space you can see I've still literally got half the bag um, full. So really useful way of doing that instead of putting them in individual stuff, stuff sacks. If you can actually just push them into the into the gaps, you do get a lot more into your into your pack. Clothes wise. So I tend to put my clothes obviously in a in a sort of dry bag. And what I would typically take would be um, some sort of something to sleep in so this is merino wool so good wicking um properties as well keep you nice and warm i have some some leggings that i would wear sort of long johns again very nice and warm and this is a four day trip so i don't need to pack too much stuff i take a probably a couple of spare t-shirts i can always wash these as i go and hang them on the back of the rucksack to dry might not be the weather <laughs> in early autumn to get that sort of uh, luxury, but hey ho. So a couple of them, I take um, a couple of pairs of um, boxer shorts to change. 
and I'll probably take uh, basically I always have the the um, working to wear a pair of socks, a pair dry, and then a pair drying. So I tend to do always do three pairs of socks. That's what I tend to do. So um, what else have I got in there? Nothing else. So that's, that's pretty much it from a um, a clothes perspective. I obviously always take a I, I guess a mid layer as well. So I'll have a um, sort of a hoodie that I might wear during the day, and if it's too warm, I'll just take it off and throw it over the over the um, rucksack so again I can basically pack them down really small get all the the air out and they'll stay nice and dry within that bag in that goes okay um, so so cooking um, I have two systems um, I have a I guess a jet boil equivalent is not the actual jet boil. It's one from um, Fire Maple, which, to be honest, is <laughs> does the same thing. It's the same principle. It's all self-contained. It's a, I think it's a one liter pot. Um, gas bottle sits inside with it uh, with the regulator. It has a stand that you for your gas bottle. Um, really good. Again, though. Weight wise, I think this weighs up with the gas bottles probably around like a seven, 750 grams mark. So, again, taking that into consideration, the other option I have is something a little bit smaller. Um, so, this is a again, I have a, a, a gas canister stand, I have a um, a Caesar Summit collapsible mug, which is great, and then I just have something that I bought off. Um, Ali Express, which is just a titanium 650 pot mug, whatever. Um, and obviously, I have the, the gas canister sits inside there. So this tends to be is what I'll I'll use it. I have a um, a decathlon um, stove, which I'll show you shortly, which I, I tend to to take with it. So I think again, weight conscious. Um, I'm going to go for for this option. Uh, for the trip okay so shelter clothes cooking all done now just to, to fill up with the rest really so obviously the next bit is is around i guess food and water um i from a food wise i, I always have a would we'll, we'll take probably a couple of of these type of things normal standard dehydration packs so i tend to take a couple of them um and also we'll have lots of um snack bars which again within within this pack within the, the hip belt you've got some great um volume there in terms of putting snacks in and that so they're easily accessible so again another good feature i also use um a chest pod which I'll, I'll show you shortly as well so i'll take some food um which will go in water i obviously where I can, I, I try and limit water. Obviously, water is a um, adds considerable weight, so I tend always to obviously take my uh, catadine um, filter. This is fantastic. Um, where these scrunches up, one liter, um, and obviously you can filter straight from any any sort of water source into your bottles. So I will take that. That will tend to go in on the the outside, so it's easily reachable if I need to. I'll also take probably one or two um, bottles of water on the go. Um, these obviously attach to the um, the rucksack straps as well, so always readily available. I don't take tend to take a bladder. Um, I'll just try and be pretty clever and on the route look at natural places, whether they be through shops, pubs, wherever I can get fill up of water, or if I see any streams and stuff. So. Hopefully, always have, have water without carrying it all all at once throughout the day. So, I tend to take that. I might take a smaller one as well. Um, that's that. Um, plenty of, as I say, snack bars. Um, additionally, um, other stuff I, I may take in. So, I'll always carry a hat. So this is another decathlon one. Again, rolls up, stuffs into the pocket. Fantastic. Always take a, a beanie hat. Uh, and I always wear um, some sort of uh, buff, um, and these are fantastic. They they serve so many purposes in terms of 
um, you know, across your head. I sweat. I tend to do sweat a lot when I'm walking. Also, obviously, to protect your, your, yourself from sun. And then, obviously, in the wind as well, you can push up over your face to act as a, as a wind guard as well. So, I mean, these are fantastic. So I'll always take maybe one or two of them with, with a hat. Um, Mother Nature Calls, again, handy. <laughs> always handy to have. Um, additional stuff I will take is I use a flexi tail two pump, um, which is obviously great for the sleep sleep pad and also will function as a um, light as well. So I think if you, there you go. So you can, uh, you can see that, uh, sort of, I might not be able to see it, but it does function as a light. So it's not only is it a, a, a pump, but it's great in the tent of a night. I will take a head torch. It's actually downstairs charging, so I can't show you that one, but that always goes with me. Um, I obviously I'll have a toiletry bag, which will go in near the top and obviously first aid as well. So usual stuff in the first aid, uh, you know, uh, paracetamol, ibuprofen, blister pads, plasters, etc. the usual type of stuff. I also take, um, always take some like maybe Savlon. I would think Savlon's really good. It stops any, any chafing, which is a walkers and runners nightmare for those who, who suffer with it. So that's, again, is always, always in my pack. So again, that will go in the top and that will push in there. Um, and last but not least, I don't take it in this bag, but I, I do have a, a bag that I put my, um, sort of my camera or my electric, shall we say. So phone charger, power bank, uh, any sort of, camera sticks etc um or my go if i take my gopro I tend to put them in here as well and and so they stay waterproof this is obviously not waterproof but i swap that into a different bag and that's pretty much it really in terms of the um in terms of the kit i would take i think the only other things obviously is waterproof so again standard waterproof they'll always be in the outside stuff them in there <laughs> And you can see already that I can fit an awful lot into this rucksack. It tends to then just, what you do is just, you can roll it, roll it over across the top, pull it, and it has a strap around the back, which cinch this up. There's another sort of strap there, which you can tie over the back. Uh, and pull tighten that one up and then there you can see it is my rucksack you can also see at the back even without the the pattern or the sleeping mask the way i've packed it it's got lots of back support there anyway so apart from the fact that you don't have any airflow from a comfort wise i found it fantastic on my last walk so um as i say i'll probably just put my sleep mat in there or a an insulation uh, cover that I sometimes put on the ground uh, to protect my sleeping pad. But that is probably what I will take on my pack. I may do a separate uh, review of this actually when I'm out on the trek. As you can see, I haven't even put anything in, in, in the pockets yet. So again, lots of stuff that can go in there. Nothing in the hip, hip belt. The only additional thing that I do tend to take on my walk, um, and this is something I tried for the first time, uh, a couple of weeks ago was the is one of these chest pods. This was a game changer for me. I'm someone who wears glasses, uh, both reading and, and for long distance and driving. So I always changing my glasses. But I found this was just fantastic, and it actually sort of straps to the um, to the shoulder pads, the shoulder strap, sorry, of the the rucksack, uh, and then just ties in. You can and you can just great for putting stuff in. You could. You know, you've got room at the back for a, a map. I have sort of little guide books that have been used as well. Again, plenty of space in to put your camera, your, you can even put a GoPro stick in, it fits in, um, sweets and stuff like that, your phone. So just really handy, it sort of sits like that. And when you walk, it's quite handy, you know, without going into your backpack all the time or your pockets that you can just delve in and out. This was fantastic. Um, I think they're mainly used for sort of trail runners use them. Um, but I, as I say, this was invaluable on my last walk. So, thanks for, for watching, guys. I hope people found that useful. I'd love to know what...
people do themselves and what they pack, decisions that they make, you know, how they make their choices. This is just the process that I go through. As I say, uh, uh, every time I do a walk or a camp, I learn a little bit more about, you know, to help me in the next time of in situations and scenarios where I might think, hmm, took that last time, didn't really need it, didn't use it. So again, it's all part of that, I guess, that learning curve and that experience to, to get to know your kit and what works in, in certain situations. Hope you liked it. Um, please feel free to leave any comments, hit like and subscribe, and hopefully we'll get some more uh, videos out for you guys soon. Take care. Bye.